Uh, next speaker is uh, Dave Paul. Uh, Dave Paul's with USDA Risk Management Agency. Uh, he has over 30 years of experience with USDA and private crop insurance. Dave's directed field operations in Billings, Montana, the Field Compliance Office in Egan, Minnesota, and the regional office in Spokane. He's managed a small Midwest-based crop insurance company. Uh, he was born in Minot, North Dakota. He has a degree in ag economics from North Dakota State University. Uh, Dave's going to talk to us today about risk management and how to know if you're covered. Um, as Don said, my name is uh, Dave Paul and I'm the uh, regional director for the USDA Risk Management Agency office out of Spokane. And we're actually a, a regional office that basically administered the, the federal crop insurance program in the states of Idaho, Oregon, Washington, and Alaska. Uh, kind of a, a unique job in, in USDA. We don't actually sell or service uh, the crop insurance. We administer it. We contract with 18 private sector insurance companies throughout the United States that actually provide the, the insurance. Uh, but we establish the rates, we establish the rules, and uh, work with the insurance companies to make sure they're uniformly um, adapted. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch on about five things here, five or six things. Just give you a little bit of a participation update on uh, crops related to direct seed and oil seeds. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, just some general stuff. As Don mentioned, I've been doing this for a lot of years. Uh, one of the things that uh, happens more frequently than I care, and one of my jobs is, is when producers are having trouble with their insurance company, perhaps, uh, they'll call me, we'll, we'll work with their insurance company to try and rectify whatever's going on. So I'm gonna, I've learned some things over the years, I'm gonna try to share some of that with you here uh, real quickly. Talk a little bit about uh, seeding methods, uh, particularly with canola and rapeseed, some interplanting uh, discussion, and then a little bit of a look into the future here. So, so this is uh, the federal crop insurance program in the states that, that we administer. Uh, you can see on, on the slide that participation rates have went up. We've got nearly $4.2 billion worth of insurance coverage. Uh, in, interestingly enough, uh, we have about $115 billion of coverage nationally, which if we were a private sector reinsurance company, which we're a government reinsurance company, but if we were a private sector reinsurance company, and we would be the largest reinsurance company in the world uh, because that's $115 billion worth of coverage. And this slide just represents technically what my job is in, in our office in Spokane. It's to work with you guys, uh, make sure that we continue to adapt the program, uh, continue to improve it, and you buy more coverage and you have more of your crop uh, insured. Uh, wheat, just looking at, at wheat real quickly, participation has been trending up and kind of correlates with price as well, but about 1.5, 1.42 uh, million or billion dollars worth of wheat coverage in the Pacific Northwest. And I'll kind of slide through these kind of fast, but uh, canola, uh, this, is, this is quite interesting, but if you look at canola coverage, um, significant increase over the last four years essentially, and, and now we're just, just right at $16 million worth of coverage and, and kind of tending to see that trend uh, go up as well. A uh, lot, lot of different insurance plans and, and choices. Um, one of the things as I get into this presentation a little bit further is just can't emphasize enough um, for producers to spend some time on this. I have seen so many situations here recently where producers had a disaster and they weren't adequately covered and weren't able to, to recuperate. And just remember this, as you guys know, this is your business. You're probably your biggest asset is your crop and so on. But we've got uh, several of our crops just have production only plans. Uh, these plans I'll touch on a little bit more, but crops like flax and mustard and safflower in the oil seeds area can insure for a specific guarantee based on your average yield on your farm. A lot of our crops now have both yield and revenue insurance plans. Uh, canola, for example, wheat, barley, corn, uh, soybeans, and, and other crops where you have essentially three choices 
to sit down and, and talk about your insurance. I'm going to show you here in a second the impact on the cost of your insurance depending upon those choices as well. So a lot of choices, and I'll kind of go in this a little bit more detail. A little bit of the demographics, so you have those choices. You can see on, on these slides what producers are doing. If you took all of the wheat in the Pacific Northwest in 2013 and basically said it's, it's insured uh, as one entity, uh, basically just about 90, 89% of the wheat in the Pacific Northwest was insured under revenue insurance protection and either uh, revenue, revenue protection 84% or revenue protection with the harvest price exclusion at 5%, and we'll touch on that a little bit more. So uh, up until 1998, we didn't even have these insurance plans. So almost all of it, not only in the Northwest, but in the, in the nation now, where we have revenue types of programs, producers are choosing those options. Uh, oil seeds, this is uh, just to take a minute to kind of absorb that, that slide, but this is essentially where we have coverage for oil seeds uh, in the Pacific Northwest. And technically, all of those counties, essentially, on that map, we have canola and rapeseed coverage. Uh, the counties that are in yellow, we add mustard to the canola and rapeseed. Counties that are in blue, add flax, basically. So we have mustard, canola, rapeseed, and flax insurance. And then those counties that are in red, we have mustard, canola, rapeseed, and safflower. Um, and, and just in fact, a, a week or so ago, I had a, a producer, I think it was in Grant County, that called me about not having insurance in, uh, for canola in that county. If you're, not, if you're in a county or you're growing in a county that's not on this map and you want insurance, you just have to go in and talk to your insurance agent and they, you can request an individual coverage and essentially the insurance agent will forward that to the company, the company will forward it to my office and we'll establish an individual offer. Once we do that and we get some people that are requesting insurance in those counties, it, it lets us know if we should go ahead and, and pursue uh, expanding into those additional counties. So when we first went into oil seeds, we did a, a real aggressive, we, I put all these counties in uh, basically and it was real aggressive. Our goal is to stay ahead of, to the best of our ability of what you, you guys are doing, but yet we need to have a little bit of data in order to establish the rates and the rules. Uh, just canola demographics with regards to uh, what producers are doing on canola. Uh, you can see in Pacific Northwest, just about 76% of growers are, are still insuring their canola, just like wheat, uh, under a revenue protection policy. So pretty high numbers. Uh, you can look at it from an individual state basis as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the insurance cycle. And this is just a, a brief part of my presentation we're gonna hopefully give you some tips that may help you down the road in terms of your insurance. And, and again, just emphasize, consider this, your, you know, your, your asset, your crop uh, is, is what you're growing out there and, and take the time to know what you got in terms of your insurance coverage. Uh, plan adequate time ahead of those sales closing dates, which we'll talk about, to sit down and look at all the options. And I'll show you a couple of slides here in a bit where you're gonna see the cost impact of the decisions you make are pretty considerable. So there's a lot of options, uh, there, options change every year, and the reason that you buy those options will change every year as well. So again, I'll just kind of walk through real quickly the insurance cycle. Probably the most important thing I can emphasize here is every year, and uh, probably some of you, your insurance agent sets this up for you, but make a folder. Uh, for all of your, your current year's crop insurance. Uh, again, I just, the, the calls that I get and the issues I try to help solve, uh, so many of them are just lack of communication or, or lack of information and producer will call up and say, well, I didn't have a copy of my policy. Well, you always get a copy of your policy from your agent, probably just don't know where it is. Uh, we have fall and spring sales closing dates for the crops. Um, you should, uh, in that insurance folder every year, you should have a copy of your basic policy, your crop provisions, and your special provisions. Just make sure you have that in your insurance folder. Again, you know, if you're insuring you know, several million dollars worth of a commodity, uh, treat it like that and, and make sure you've got it in order. Uh, your coverage is determined by unit, and I'll talk about units here in a, in a second, but it's based on your actual yields on your farm. So your record keeping is very important to that as well. Uh, the insurance plan, 
the level of coverage and the price are chosen at the time of your application or the policy change in subsequent years. So application, uh, this is just a reminder, this is a continuous policy. When you, when you buy insurance, it's gonna continue from year to year until you make a change. You can make those changes up until the sales closing date or the cancellation date for that crop. So if you're buying yield protection and next year you want to change that to revenue protection because the price of wheat went up or, or changed, then you have to make that change before that sales closing date for that crop. But on your, on your application, there are certain things that you do need to have. Have, have to make sure that it's the correct person or entity type. Um, and then that, that person or, or entity has the power of attorney to sign for that farm. We just had a, a large claim that we worked on in Spokane. It was, it was a partnership between two married couples. And for whatever reason, three of the four in, in the, of the two marriage couples had power of attorney to sign for the partnership. And unfortunately, um, in this particular case, the, the fourth person that didn't have power of attorney actually signed the application, which voided the policy because they didn't have a power of attorney for that policy. So just check those little things. Um, you have to make sure that you include all your applicable social security numbers or employee identification numbers depending upon the type of operation. If it's a, a individual operator, if it's a, a corporation or whatever. And you have to report anybody that has a substantial beneficial interest in your farm. And substantial beneficial interest is anything more than a 10% share. On that application, choose your plan of insurance coverage level and price percent. And then up till that sales closing date for that, for that next year, which for canola, canola rapeseed for fall is August 31st, uh, for spring it's March 15th, and then all wheat, whether it's winter wheat or spring wheat, the sales closing cancellation date is September 30th. On or before September 30th for wheat or August 31st for canola, fall canola, you can either cancel, or sign up for insurance, you can change your insurance plan, percentage of the price election, if that's applicable to coverage levels, and select the enterprise units, which I'll talk about each year. As Soon as you do that policy change form, your insurance company should send you a policy confirmation. Very, very important. Uh, I'm sure many of you are familiar with your car insurance. Every time you make a change in your car insurance, you get a whole stack of paper for your insurance company. Make sure you get that policy confirmation. Uh, look at it. Make sure if you changed uh, from yield protection to revenue protection that that company got that change. It's a whole lot easier to fix that stuff early in the season uh, versus late. And then put a copy of that policy confirmation form in your insurance folder after you've reviewed it. If you get in a situation of replanting, uh, whether it be fall canola or fall wheat or spring wheat or spring canola, uh, as long as that wheat crop is damaged after the, the early final planting date for that crop in that county, the company can pay you to replant. Uh, the wheat replant payments essentially are four bushels times our projected price for wheat. Uh, the replant payment on canola is 175 pounds times our price election and barley's five bushels. So those are just some of the, the fall kind of crops that we've got here. Uh, when it's practical to replant, so if you put a crop in it's, and it doesn't make it out of the winter or, or the fall, or it gets crusted over, doesn't come up, um, if you don't replant it, insurance isn't going to attach on that. There are winter coverage endorsements as well. I will tell you, if you're buying a winter coverage endorsement today, um, I, would, I would really discuss that with your insurance agent and see if you understand you know, what you're buying. You get basic replant coverage under the basic policy. Uh, in, in the past, uh, we had the majority of producers buying a winter coverage option today, probably only 10% of growers because of the way the program has changed. So the next thing that you have to do is report your production every year for the coming crop. You report this production certification program by unit, by crop, by type. So if you have winter and spring wheat and fall canola, you report an actual production history, uh, certify your acres in production uh, for the most recent year in the base period to continue to establish your yields for your insurance coverage. Uh, all acreage in production must be reported by practice and type for each APH crop here that's being reported. And that's got to sort of correspond to the uh, unit level that you've chosen on your farm as well. And, and as you certify your production, one of the things you sign at the bottom of that production certification is you've got records to substantiate your yield certification. 
And one thing I'll tell you too is if when you're certifying your production, put those records you've used to certify that production in that insurance file. And if you have a claim on your crop for the current year or whatever, and that claim is in excess of $200,000, that insurance adjuster is going to ask for your production records before he's going to pay your claim. And they have to do what's called an APH review. So keep, when you certify your production, put those records in that folder. If you're in a situation where you're going to have a claim, it's going to be a substantial claim, you'll have those records available. Hand them to your adjuster when he comes to the door, and you'll be able to get paid a whole lot quicker than if they wait until they've finished everything and got that done. So keep all that information in your insurance file. Acreage report, uh, as soon as you plant your crop, there's acreage reporting dates. Uh, for most of our spring crops, the acreage reporting date is July 15. This is probably the most important thing you do all year. Uh, and this is the thing to make sure you do right as well. Uh, make sure you review and sign that acreage report. Uh, make sure it, it's accurate, obviously and it should match what you're reporting or certifying at FSA as well. And at the end of the year, FSA and RMA go through a reconciliation process, and if what you report to RMA doesn't match what you report to FSA, it's gonna kick that policy out. Uh, and when you get, when you report that, uh, those acres, put a copy of your actual acre report in your file as well. As soon as you report your coverage or your acres to your insurance agent, the company will process that, and they'll turn around and send you, send you a schedule of insurance. And this schedule of insurance is something that you really, really need to review. Um, make sure when you get the schedule of insurance back from your insurance company that it matches your acreage report, it matches your share, all of the information on there is accurate. Um, if you get into a situation where it's not accurate and you have a loss, uh, companies cannot increase your coverage once you've had lo a loss out there. It's just going to hurt you at the end of the day. So review that schedule of insurance. If you notice something is wrong, contact your insurance company immediately. File that in your insurance folder and uh, go down the road. Probably the only insurance or product uh, in the world that you can pay for uh, almost after you use it. But our premium billing is in the rear. Um, you sign up in the fall, you plant your crop, and the insurance company, if you're, if you're growing wheat, is going to bill you on August 15th of the year you harvest, harvest the crop. August 1st for canola and rapeseed. Uh, interest is going to start to accrue on the first day of the month following uh, the full month after that. It has to be at least 30 days before they'll start charging you, you interest. Um, check that billing statement. Uh, Bottom line is, is when you get that bill from the company, don't forget to pay. There are a couple of things. For example, if you're in a loss situation, uh, let's say your, your wheat crop and canola crop got wiped out and you get a bill from your insurance company, say on, on uh, August 1st or August 15th, and you've got to have that paid by uh, September 15th or whatever, and your claim is has not been completed yet, you can contact your insurance company, you can ask to set up a payment plan. You don't have to have that entire premium payment paid by that termination date. As long as you have a payment plan set up with your insurance company, you're sticking to that uh, payment plan, then your insurance is gonna remain in force as well. So there's, the companies will work with you on that, particularly if you're in a claim situation. Um, if you are, if you get in a situation where you don't pay that premium by that termination date, there's almost nothing that can be done. You're going to lose your insurance for the next year. And just about every year, I was telling, I was down in Climate Falls last week and I had to deal with a producer that basically had forage production, wheat and barley on their billing. Forage production was a cap policy, it was a $300 bill. They didn't see it on that premium bill that that was due earlier. They paid the premium by the wheat sales closing date because they didn't pay the forage production on time it uh, retroactively took them out of coverage for all their other crops. So pay attention to your premium notices uh, and your billing notices and so on. And then if you get in a situation at the end of the year when you're, when you're producing your crop or you've noticed some damage uh, of any kind, my best advice uh, to each and every one of you is to notify your insurance company or agent immediately uh, when there's been any kind of damage. It doesn't matter how severe the damage is, if there's any damage whatsoever, contact your insurance company. And their policy puts some requirements in there, but even beyond the policy requirements is, again, it's your crop, it's your investment. Uh, contact that, your agent, 
uh, immediately if you notice any kind of damage. And probably the most important thing uh, here today is, in my talk anyways, is the red follow up that in writing. Uh, if you have a, a notice of loss, you, con you call your insurance agent and report a loss, um, send them an email, put a, a little loss card in the mail or whatever. It protects you as a consumer so we don't get in a situation where three months down the road the, you're calling me and I'm calling the company and the company said, well, I never knew you, know, you had a, a notice out there and you're telling me that you called the agent on July 15th, but there's nothing to document that. So follow that up in writing. Put a copy of your notice in your insurance file. It's going to do nothing but protect you as the insured. And then participate actively in your claims adjustment. Take your insurance file with you. Uh, ask questions. Make sure you're comfortable with the adjustment. Uh, get clear answers. I mean, that's again, it's your crop. It's your policy. Uh, that adjuster is just a fact finder. Um, just recently, we worked an Apple claim for a producer up in the Okanagan. Um, the producer went out with our adjuster for the company and one of the folks in my office, it was a large claim. Uh, we were helping them on the claim. Uh, they did an adjustment on one block of apples. It started to rain. Uh, they came back after lunch and they asked the producer, and they, on apples you send the grates to USDA grader. And the producer was happy with the representative sample, the grades and everything else. In the afternoon, the, the producer said he had to go back to work, just go out and take the samples and take them to the grader. Uh, so the, two, the adjuster and the person from our office did that. They sent the sample to the graders. The grades came back completely different than the grades on that other sample. And the producer was like, this doesn't make any sense. Um, this should have had similar damage to other blocks of apples, but he wasn't there in the field when they took the sample. So, you know, take the time. Again, it's your crop. Um, make sure you're comfortable. Uh, with all of that. Um, some of the other things to consider uh, working with your agent uh, before the sales closing date. Um, yield guarantees are based on your approved APH. Your revenue policy provides protection against both yield losses, upside and downside price protection, or just downside price protection. And really remember when you're looking at insuring wheat or canola, for example, that are projected in harvest prices that RMA announces are probably the most important thing for you. We'll Project the price in the fall. That's what's going to be used to establish your insurance coverage. We're going to uh, announce the price in the, after you harvest the crop the next fall, and that's going to be used to multiply times your yield to determine whether you fall below the guarantee. It's not the price you're getting for your canola or wheat at the elevator. It's the price that RMA is announcing. So just a real quick, real quick example here. This is a, a producer's uh, actual production history. Again, you would have one of these for every unit by practice and type. So if you have 10 units on your farm, you'd have 10 actual production histories. This particular case, this producer certified five years of records. They, it was a summer file wheat unit, um, unit number one. So you can see in 09, they certified a 91 bushel yield based on the production in acres and so on. The total was 350, the simple average is 70. So that becomes the producer's actual production history yield. That's the yield that's used to establish your production guarantee and or your revenue guarantee. So in, in this case, if you can insure up to 85% of that uh, from 50 85% and 5% increments. Uh, in this case, if the producer has selected 80% coverage, 70 bushels times 80 is 56. So if you buy yield protection, if you have a 55 bushel crop, you're guaranteed 56, you'll get paid for one bushel at our price election, basically. Uh, we'll, Project the price on the revenue side. If our, our fall price for wheat was $6.72, take that times the 56 bushels, that would be your revenue guarantee. And then we would take your harvested bushels of the crop times our harvest price. If it falls below that revenue guarantee, then you would collect a payment on that. Um, I'm gonna quickly go through a couple of uh, or your unit choices. Uh, again, this is you establish an APH average yield by crop, by practice, and by type for each unit that you establish. You have three basic options, uh, basic units, which is what you get with the standard policy. Optional units, that's the furthest breakdown and most expensive. And enterprise units, that's the largest uh, and the least expensive, and I'll show you real quickly. Uh, I can tell you, though, that one of the most important things when you're looking at your farm units is to map this out every year 
and in other presentations that I do, I actually go through some examples. If you're not planting on every unit every year, why have all those units? If you're in a summer fall rotation, you can probably combine units and save you dollars because optional units will charge you more for optional units versus basic units, and you can increase your yields by combining units largely and less reliance on a county transitional yield. So in this example, this is a, I think a Lewis or Nez Perce County farm that we kind of use all the time. It's a good example. This producer's farming in all these different units. Uh, all of the stuff that's circled on the, on the top is basically he's farming on a 100% share. He either owns and operates it or he's cash renting. And then the three fields in the southeast corner basically is share renting from a, from a landlord. So those are two, two basic units. That's what you get standard by the policy. Um, basically what would happen here is you'd have an APH average yield for all the wheat, for example, or all the canola and all the fields that are in that top circle and an APH average yield by practice and type for all the wheat or canola that's in the bottom circle. Uh, if you have a loss, in particular that little blue um, field up in the northeast corner is section 22. For example, if, if you had basic units and uh, you, a hailstorm came through and took out that field in the blue, uh, your insurance company is probably not going to pay you for a loss on that because that's going to average in with the production from all those other fields in that unit to determine whether or not you have a loss. And the field or the, the basic unit down in the southeast corner would be treated uh, as one individual unit as well. So the option here, if, you've, if you're in a situation where you have a lot of hail or you have a lot of elevation change or whatever, and you have a lot of spot kinds of losses, again, this is the most expensive option, but you can break these out. And essentially that basic unit, those two basic units can be broken out into eight optional units just in this example. Legally identifiable sections. Uh, so now you would have an APH average yield by practice and by type for each of those different fields in each of those units. And now if you had a loss in that blue field, section 22, if a hailstorm come through and it didn't bother the rest of that, the adjuster is going to treat that like a separate policy. So you're going to have a guarantee on that particular field. You're going to appraise the production on that field to determine whether you have a loss. And then the last option is you can put everything that you grow in the county into an enterprise unit. Uh, this is by far the most inexpensive um, situation. Uh, I don't know, many of you will remember, probably all of you remember, in 2009, um, RMA announced the $8.98 projected price on wheat, the highest projected price that we've announced since we started insuring on the revenue side. Um, that price went down $4.09 in 2009 between projected and, and harvest price. Um, this option wasn't available in 2009 across the board. It is now for wheat and canola. And in, in those years when that price goes way up and you start looking at the cost of your insurance at 80 and 85 percent coverage, you might want to consider consolidating all your units into one unit. You can cut your cost and I'll actually show you an example of that. But now in this case, you're, all your wheat's going to be averaged together at the end of the day to determine whether or not you have a loss. If you're in a very homogeneous area, uh, like where I grew up in eastern North Dakota, um, you know, you did, elevation didn't change. There was no elevation, pretty much, um, or no elevation change. Um, and, you know, you had the standard rainfall throughout the county and so on and so forth. So it really works well here. When you get out into the Pacific Northwest, you got a lot of elevation change and everything else. Again, on certain years, this is a great option. On other years, uh, maybe not. So once you've established your APH yield by practice and type, you've chosen your insurance plan, or you have, then you have to choose your insurance plan, and you have yield protection or revenue protection available for these crops that are on the slide. Actually, dry peas and lentils, for the first time in 2013, we have a revenue policy. Uh, we're just finalizing all the losses on that right now for this last year. You have those choices. Yield protection is just very basic. Uh, guarantee is based on the projected price. Uh, again, in our example earlier, you had a 56 bushel guarantee. If you produce 55 bushels, we're going to pay you for one bushel uh, at that price, at that projected price, or $6.72 price for wheat. Revenue protection guarantee is based on the higher of the projected or the harvest price, upside and downside price protection. So again, looking at 2009, 
guaranteed you based on, on $8.98, the price went down to $4.89, a $4.09 price change. That's what you paid that extra premium for. Price can go the other way, it can go up. If that price goes up, uh, your insurance coverage goes up commensurate with that increase in price. And if you have a loss and that price goes up, the company's gonna pay you at that higher price. And your third option is just downside price protection. So if that price goes up, you don't get that additional coverage for the price going up. Um, 2009 in retrospect or hindsight, um, revenue protection with the harvest price exclusion, just downside price protection in an enterprise unit would have been the best choice that year. So real quickly, look at the cost difference. Across the, the top, this is um, wheat. And I, I think this is Lincoln County. It's at 70 bushel average yield. And this premium cost will vary by producer, by county. Um, these are two examples, 85% 80, coverage on a 1,000 acre farm. Our projected price was 672. Uh, so you, basically, you have the three unit options um, that right underneath the winter wheat uh, in each of the rows across the columns. You have yield protection, upside, downside, price protection in the middle and just downside price protection on the side. And if you look at this, the cost of your insurance at 80% coverage can vary between $2.12 an acre to $10.41 an acre, depending upon what option you choose. And then look, at, look down at 85% coverage, and basically if the, the difference in cost is exponential, the higher you buy insurance, because that bushel is gonna be the next one you're gonna lose. So you can look at the, the difference that between 80 and, 80, 80 and 85% coverage uh, with revenue protection optional units goes from $10.41 an acre to $16.11 an acre. So maybe you're sitting there talking to your insurance agent, trying to make these choices and you say, holy smokes, 16, I need to keep my coverage up, but $16.11 an acre is too much for me. Um, so consider then, what are my options? I could go to an enterprise unit and I can have that 85% coverage instead of 80% coverage at just about the same cost that I would have 80% coverage uh, with optional units. So again, looking at where you are that year, what's your main, main source of risk, and how much coverage you need to buy. Uh, there is a lot of difference in these costs. Uh, canola, this is um, fall canola, summer fallow in Lincoln County. Same kind of deal, this is 75% coverage compared to 85% coverage. Your cost from $5.53 or 43 cents an acre to 15.65 an acre for 75% coverage and so on. And these numbers will change based on the county, based on the yield and so on. I just put these up here to show you there's a lot of difference. So don't do the same thing every year. Con or really work with your insurance agent to make the best choices that you can. Uh, this is uh, Nez Pierce, or no, Lewis County. Idaho, and this is a canola producer here. So the 75% coverage, the cost difference between 767 and $24 an acre for this. And again, that's gonna vary uh, between uh, crops and based on your yield. Just about wrapping up here, but the insured crop basically for canola and rapeseed, we're gonna talk just briefly about, uh, about interplanting and those kinds of things. Basically, your insured crop for canola is that which you plant for harvest as seed. Uh, you can't interplant it with another crop, but that interplanting basically means acreage in which two or more crops are planted in a manner that does not permit separate maintenance or harvest of the insured crop. So we only classify interplanting if you can, if you're gonna have two crops on that ground and you can't separately harvest uh, those two crops. Uh, seeding, uh, basically the middle paragraph here, except for flax, land on which the seed is initially spread into the soil surface by any method and subsequently mechanically incorporated into the soil in a proper depth will be considered uh, to be planted. So that's kind of how that is covered. Uh, earliest planting dates in the fall um, for, for canola, we actually move these back based on feedback from growers. Uh, all this means if you plant canola, irrigated canola before August 1st, we don't really, you can do that, but if you have to replant that crop, you're gonna replant it on your own dime versus getting paid by the insurance company. So that's all that earliest planting date means is you plant before that date for that practice and you have to replant, you're not gonna get a replanting payment. It's gonna cost, you're gonna have to pay for that. Uh, all other practices, July 1st in Oregon and July 15th 
in Idaho and Washington. Uh, and this is a question we got, and I, th I think uh, this was actually posted in the Pacific Northwest uh, newsletter, basically. This was a guy that, in, that was going to intercede winter wheat with tillage radishes, and we got the call to say, is that okay uh, to do that? Uh, the producer was contemplating doing that. And actually, that was determined to be an okay practice because those tillage radishes basically um, essentially were going to be killed out and the, the wheat could be harvested separately from the radishes. So it was really a good practice. The uh, producer was doing it for the right reasons. And what we're trying to do is not create obstacles for producers to follow good conservation. And then I think this is uh, my last or second to the last slide, but cover crops. Um, this year, in 2000 and in, for 2014, RMA and NRCS have joined forces at the national level basically to make sure that neither one of us creates obstacles for the other in terms of what you guys are doing to have good conservation out there. But we're actually now have changed all of our cover, cover crop statements on all of our crops to basically tailor back to what NRCS is, is recommending. And, and basically, as long as you're um, planting cover crops and terminating those cover crops in accordance with NRCS guidelines, it shouldn't have really any impact on your crop insurance. And if you have any questions on that, and uh, John Quill and I are gonna be here the rest of the time. We've got actually some fact sheets at the USDA booth uh, right around the corner to kind of talk about that. We're actually gonna be looking at what impact that's gonna have on summer fallow for this next year as well, because we've got some guys in some dry land areas that are putting the cover crop on, which is impacting whether that crop is called summer fallow or an annual crop. My last slide, um, I, I always try to emphasize this when I, when I do talks, particularly with growers, is we work for you. Uh, my job is to make sure that we continue to tailor this insurance program to fit your needs. This is our contact information. Uh, you can come and get a card at, a, at that booth or whatever, but if, if we don't have coverage in a county that you need coverage in, if our planning dates are wrong, if our yields are wrong, or whatever you see out there, needs to be changed, or if you just have questions or feedback, you know, give, give me a call. Um, talk to farmers practically every day uh, in the office, and so we want to continue to stay ahead of, to the best of our ability about, uh, with what you guys are doing. So with that, um, I want to thank you for the, for the opportunity. I know that was fast, um, but thank you for the opportunity to visit uh, this afternoon, and if, again, if you have any questions, um, just come and see us at at our booth or over the course of the next couple of days. Thank you, Don.